All right. We have, so we'll do a, a drawing while we're talking here about silly stuff. So what I'm going to try and do, which isn't, uh, we talked about yesterday. Generally, what somebody will do is do un, what they call underdrawing, right? So if you were going to do, um, yeah, so I've got a layer here. I'll give myself another layer. So generally what would end up happening, depending on how big the thing is, you go, oh, okay, you're going to draw a head. So you, so you hold that, probably must be what. Um, so, so you, you know, again, you come in here, you do the, the underdrawing, if you will, right? Like, just so you give yourself some frame of mind. If I'm doing... Let's say if I'm doing Spidey or something like that, right? then I get to figure out where I'm going to put his eyes or something like that. Uh, uh, and, I, and I just sort of go from there and start building out. You know, if I think the chin should be a little bit wider, I do it. You know, depending on how much head I want to show. Mm. And then you usually want the jaw to be like, Closer than the than the back of the head, so the back of the head goes a little bit wider. So, anyway, that's that's sort of generally how how we do a lot of stuff, and then you just start adding all the components, right, of the head and the shoulders and whatever else you're doing, and how you know going to make them swing and bang. so um, and you start drawing your body, and then eventually you get there. So. Uh, so that's sort of generally how I do it. But for tonight, I'm going to try and do a magic trick uh, that I don't recommend, which is I'm not going to do any underdrawing. Uh, I'm just going to draw, and which means that it better be right. Uh, and now, and the way to be able to do that is you do um, – you do monsters. And I always tell people monsters are the coolest thing to draw. And the reason they're cool to draw because you can never draw them wrong. Because if you draw a monster, nobody's going to say, hey, the eyes are too big or the eyes are too small or the teeth are wrong or the shoulders are because like there's no reference, right? So if you draw a monster, you get it right every single time perfect. So I'll just make up something as we're uh, sort of sitting here. Uh, let me ask you a question that I don't know. If I turn my page, does it turn to you guys? You guys see it stationary the whole time. Um, I don't know. Do it and find out. <laughs> well, I would... Okay. Yeah, it stayed upright for us the whole time. It, okay, well, I'm gonna, okay, let me, let me just do... I'm going to do a silly test here. If if you um if you turn off the stream, turn it sideways, then turn back on the stream, it'll then display in the in the format in the landscape format. Okay, uh, is it better for you guys to for me to do landscape or to do uh, a portrait? However you want to do it. I mean, portrait works good on mobile device because it's vertical for me. So I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't know. Are most people, man, I don't, I don't know. We don't, we don't know. He's, he's people, asking the people. community, not, not so much us. So if you're in here and, and you're viewing and you want it, like you can yeah, see are you on, are you on a lap? Are you on a laptop, which would, which would be uh, uh, landscape, or are you on uh, uh, a mobile app? And in, the, and in the meantime... Go portrait. Go portrait. Okay. It's better for mobile. Okay, so, in, mobile. So, here's, so here's the test, just real quick. Do you guys see the X I just made? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna turn it right. I'm turning it, so I've now turned it like 45 degrees. Is it turning it, Euron? Yep. Yes. Oh. yes. So, so anything I do, anything I do, all that movement, yes. you guys see it. We see it turning. Oh, yep. so, so if I zoom in, you guys see the zoom and everything yes. else. Yep. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that because I I usually spin my pages a lot, and and so I don't want to. I, I need to be cognizant that I'm not getting people dizzy. Uh, I'll tell you, one of the 
one of the questions we got is um let me go back and make sure i ask uh is this photoshop or illustrator like what program are you using on the ipad uh i'm i'm using uh i do have photoshop which is what i use at um my office right but when I'm drawing on the iPad, I, I use a program that I think comes preloaded when you buy the iPad called Clip Studio. So Clip Studio. That's exactly what someone guessed. Someone said it looks like Clip Studio Paint, which has an iPad version. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that it does is like if I go up to my pens here, uh, let me show you up, up here. If I go up to my pens here, then I have like, I don't know if you guys can see in the top left. Uh, I'll make a little Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Everything that you can see, we can see. Right, but you don't know where I'm pointing. But in the top left there, there's the, the top pen there is called map, a mapping point, right? And the mapping point basically is simulating the same pen that I use when I do it on paper. I use a mapping point on paper. So you can, you can get dozens and dozens of brushes but I just use the mapping point, you know, almost exclusively because it basically does the same tricks as I do when I'm doing it on paper. So I got, I, I can come up with a lots of different brushes, but anyways, it's, it's my go-to brush. So, uh, and then, and then here you can change basically the size of it. So if I go to and do a five, then I get a line that big. And if I make it a 70, then I get it that big. And then not only on top of that, it's also pressure sensitive. So if I, if I, if I go thin to thick, I can start doing feathering. So, or, or the other way, I can go thick to thin. So, and what that allows me to do is if I'm drawing a line, I can, I can sit there and squeeze it a little bit and give just a little bit of uh, hot highlights to stuff. So that if you're doing brick walls, the, the line isn't perfect. You can make it a little bit inconsistent. So. so do you also use this on, if you're drawing like on a Cintiq in Photoshop? Because I always struggle with like a brush choice. But do you just use one brush and then just change the size? Yeah, what I do, and I don't know if I have it set up here. Um, I don't know where the settings are. I know in Photoshop. But you can set up your brush settings. Right? Let me see if it's here. Uh, yeah, it's already a pen tip. Um, anyways, what you can do is, which I discovered, just so everybody knows, I discovered it after months of doing digitally. And I was like, oh, fuck, finally, there it is. Because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't make it look like what I was doing with my pen. But what ends up happening, you can usually go to the settings, and I'm just going to do it manually here. Um, and they have a radius setting. And so you have a radius setting, which is like almost like a perfect circle, right? So this is your brush and your brush. If you have the, like this, which is usually a hundred percent, if you have it like that, then what ends up happening is you're not going to get a lot of tapering on it because it's going to be sort of uh, roundish at, at both ends. You're going to get more, you're going to get more of an even line like that, right? So what 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 I do is I, I play with it and I think I, I use mine at about 80%. And if I go to 80%, then what ends up happening is that instead of it being a circle, it becomes an oval. The shape of your brush becomes an oval. And the reason that matters is because if you're stroking it this way, it's skinny. And if you're stroking it this way, it becomes fat. So uh, we're here, if you stroke it this way and you stroke it this way, it's about the same, no matter what direction you go. Um, and, then, and then on top of it, you can also then tilt it, right? And you can tilt it, and the reason that's important... I don't understand because, why people want to talk about VBO, then. Pardon me? That was an but, open mic. Go ahead, Todd. Oh, that was a hot mic. Uh, the reason you want to tilt is because some of us are left-handed and some of us are right-handed. So not only, not only do I do this sort of 80% right here, I also tilt it. So I take that oval and I tilt it, I tilt it like that. So that, so that it, 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 it basically, because I'm constantly coming, most of my lines come from like 
the left hand side and go shooting to the right uh, hand side. Um, and it, and it's interesting that if you draw and you're not paying attention, uh, they say that you're either a pusher or you're a puller, right? And a puller, I'm a puller. And what a puller means is that I start high and I pull it towards myself. And I pull it towards myself and I pull it towards myself. There are others that basically start at their body and then they put and they push it away from they push it away from themselves. There's no again, there's no right or wrong, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. But you'll find that you once you discover whether you're better at pulling or pulling or pushing, then that's why you spend the page all the time. Because then you can constantly be doing the same line that you have control over. So if I have a square and I want to do some lines, then I can go, you know, I can, I can, I can pull them towards me. And then if I want to do something in that bottom corner here, then all I would do is literally turn it around and I would still do a pull. So I would constantly be doing a pull. All my lines are going to be pulls, even though, even though I'm coming from two different directions. So, uh, which is why, like I was saying, I'm, I'm constantly spinning the page, even, even when I'm inking, because the same thing applies when I'm inking, that, that I'm constantly making sure that, and, and I, I just find, for whatever reason for me, that I, I have more control with a line if I, if I do it. So if I go small, I can almost do straight lines if I, if I, if I do a pull. And I pull it towards me. I can do, I can do almost straight lines. I mean, those are, those are almost straight lines, and I just did all those by hand, these ones here. So I used to do, a, like, uh, a lot of the speed lines and stuff that I used to do, right? I used to do a lot of those uh, when I was on Spider-Man and Spider and, and Spawn. I used to I used to whip those things out. I mean, just used to whip them out fairly easily. It also allows me to do that if I don't have a ruler and I want to do buildings. I can sort of fake it, and then and then I can come in here and I can sort of add my my sort of cityscape lines. So that, let me see, I'll go a little bit bigger here. Mm. Then all of a sudden, you know, you're doing the side of a building. Mm. And now you just, it just, at that point, you're just trying to put a perspective on the building a little bit, right? And then you decide whether you want to, on a building, whether you want to have a couple of them are a little bit darker, right? You got a couple that are a little bit dark. And then if you want, you can come in with white and you can either, you know, cut a couple things across to, so you have a little bit extra detail. Or if you want to do some detail, like, let's say, up over on the other side. And I, I got a fat brush. I would actually make a smaller brush. But, and then you can do antennas, right? You start doing things like antennas. <laughs> Water, to water towers, right? Do water towers. You know, all of a sudden you got, you know, wires going from one building to the other. Uh, and, and then you just build. And next thing you know, you, you can get to cities really quickly. Now, you don't even have to do that. That's an old man trick. You don't even have to do that anymore because they have, they have line tools on these things. So you can literally... Uh, I don't have it here, but you can literally do do the line tool on the iPad is you just do a line, you just touch your pen, and then you hold shift, and wherever you hold shift and you touch it here, it will draw a perfectly straight line between those two for it. So you can even cheat it if you want. So you don't even have to do what I used to have to do back there. Uh, but even, even uh, if I dump this, even... There's another thing on uh, Photoshop that the way I used to do uh, the spaghetti webbings is that I used to, let me see if I go big here for you. I, I used to ha literally draw every strand, right? I, would, I, I mean, I would 
I was stu- stupid anal. I don't know why I came up with it. Let me just tell you, I've said before, if I, if I was drawing Spider-Man for the first time when I was 50, I would never have done this. Um, but when you're youth, youthful, you think it's super cool. And then I'd have to come in here, and I got to the point where I was really diligent, uh, not at the beginning, but when I figured out how to do it, uh, then I said, no, I'm never going to cross any of these lines. And so I'd come up in here, and I'd make sure that, and sometimes you'd put a shadow or something if you want, and then you'd have, you know, a loose one here. And I'd have to draw it, and then continue, right? Continue, 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 and then, oh, come back in with a couple more, and just keep doing that over and over and over, right? I mean, if you guys got any of my old Spider-Man, take a look at the webbing and just go, what the hell was taught? Like, it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even, it's not even the same thing that I, that I did because it took way, way too long. It looked cool as shit, but it took way, way too long to do it. Uh, the only reason I bring that up is that there's now a tool that essentially does this for me. Uh, it's called the stroke tool. Um, so now you can see if you go down to see the webbing. Uh, so it looks kind of cool. But you can imagine, not only did I used to do it, so I go, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cross anything over. Uh, not only would I do that, but uh, remember, I made it so that it wasn't just coming from his hand to the wall. I, I would make it like a lasso. So I'd have 50 feet of this that I'd have to do. Uh, and then I also decided that Spider-Man's face didn't, wasn't good enough. You know, I mean, this is, I'm going to do a bad version of his face looking straight on. Um, that it used to be like um, one, maybe two circles, and then maybe three lines. All right? This is sort of what he used to look like when I took him over. Uh, and it's not the prettiest drawing, I understand. But, uh, but if you guys remember, I then went, what? Why can't they make more lines? Why can't we make this twice, three times? four times a lady and then extras like, and, and it would take a long, it would take a long time just to do it with straight lines. But now remember what I ended up having to do was, uh, I can show it here is that I would have to do that. Then I would have to do it. Uh, let me put a layer here. So this would be the pencils here. And then I'd have to come in there. And go, okay, now it's time to do the, now it's time to actually do the webbing. And I have to then draw all those lines. And I'm, do, I'm taking it easy because I got it straight on right now. But then, and then, and then I had to like do the swoop. So I couldn't even do a circle, right? I had to like do these swoops. And of course, every one of them, I had to try and touch each one of them so it hit my line so that they look good up, up on each one of them. So I would spend one or two days at the end of each month just going over all my pages doing the spaghetti webbing and doing the webbing on his costume. It was, it was one of the last things I would do because I knew it was just going to be super repetitive and boring and, it, I, and I was going to be there all day. Boom, boom. Right? And I just do that over and over and over on every panel. So, yeah. And somehow, <laughs> somehow, I think, and then at times writing a book uh, on my own. So, uh, yeah, not the, not the smartest choices to make. So, uh, all right. So, we'll get to, let me just see how fat my pen is here. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a thirty because I got a pretty high res um, piece of paper here. So, all right. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come up with something stupid as we're as we're going. If anybody's got any questions, you want to do it. Um, 
I'll probably for efficiency wise, I'll probably do uh, again the profile shot because it just allows me to not have to draw two sets of eyes and two cheeks and two. I can just draw one. Um, I usually like to, if I'm doing something like this, I usually like to start with eyes. Um, and if I'm going to do a monster, I usually figure if you look at most animals, uh, most animals have uh, black eyes. So you can can pretty much start with black if you want because that's almost most animals if you give too much white i don't think it looks like an animal uh and the thing that's cool is that i can also come back in here and add you know a line of white if i want to so i don't have to even worry about it um you know so as, as i'm doing this maybe i'll give myself even a bigger pen um you're trying to come up with and here's the thing when you're drawn is that people miss a little bit is that you go, okay, animals all have tear ducts too, right? So you do a tear duct and then you have a ledge that is going to be your, your, you know, whatever it is is going to be up here. I don't even know what he's going to look like, but, uh, you're going to, you're going to want to have a ledge up in here. And then the question is, does the ledge create a shadow up underneath here? And if it creates a shadow, then you can do it. And, and you can always come in and add a little bit later. But you're just sitting there. And so you go, okay, and if it's an animal, uh, it's a monster or something like that. Let's make it a monster. Then is the skin going to be craggly? So let's say the answer is yes. So then you can start giving him, you know, wrinkly, wrinkly eye uh, uh, sort of bags. So now he's got bags under his eyes. Um, might even might even be a little little craggly up in here. Probably have to get it. I'll probably in hindsight have to build this up a little bit on this side just so you see it. Uh, and then the question is, what are we what are we going to do up up in here, right? So let's just say we're going to look like one of the scrolls or something that has some segmented sort of thing that sort of is there. But again, the one of the things you want to do is continue to try and figure out whether there's places that you can give weight to it so that as you're going you're saying hey i'm gonna i'm gonna go here i'm gonna maybe i'm gonna give him a horn here you know i'm gonna overlap i'm gonna do a dark one because that means it looks like one's in the background it's up in here uh you can you can go with sort of sharp sort of tiny ones uh again if you do that you can come in there and cut the white up in here you can, you can, once you get some of the shape up in here, you go, okay, I'm going to make a fin. And then maybe I want the fin to be a little bit black. So I'm going to do something. Uh, let me see, it's been just a bit too big. I'm not going to be able to do any cool detail. But, uh, so once I, once I get, once I get sort of some of the basics up in here, then what, then what you're doing is you're, you're sort of cutting lines in different directions, right? So that, again, you, you create an illusion of gray so that when I make it that big, you start to see sort of the creature coming to life just a little bit more. And then there's even tricks like, again, up here, if I want to give him, let's say, warts. So let's just say we're going to give him some warts up in here. And there's two ways you can do it. You can just give him warts. Or you can actually just say, hey, I'm going to make some of them are going to be black. Or you can actually even just come in. And this is where you can get messy and you don't even have to worry about it. You can, you can come in, do some black, and do, do whatever here, blah, blah, blah. I come up in here. Mm -mm -mm. And it then, reminds me and of then your you, Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Like, is Hulk then, more of a monster to you? Yeah, but then you can come in here and then you can take, I don't know, let me go bigger. Then you can take your white and you can cut your white back in it. And then you put the white on top of it and now you've got more of a pattern of what you're doing, right? So now when you get it a little bit smaller, it feels more like freckles up in here. And then if I want to go again, you know, way smaller with my brush, then I can, I can cut some, some details 
in on, you know, the fin or something like that, right? You know, go on it. Some stuff. And sometimes you're doing monsters. This is that thing, right? You just you just want to, like, pit up some of the lines so they just kind of look cool. Or you want to give them, let's say, hair, right? So you just happen to have some stray hairs every now and then. And the, and, and, the th and the reason is because, again, if you think of them as being animals, then they're living out in the wild, and they're not going to dentists, and they're not going to doctors. So you got to assume their teeth are going to be all fucked up, and their complexion is going to be all messed up, and they're not really taking care of themselves, right? So it's okay. If you want to give some wrinkled texture. Hey, Todd, I've always wanted to ask you about your Hulk and your interpretation of Hulk when you took on. The, when I took him over, he was the Grey Hulk, right? Correct. So, but if, if I see a lot of similarity for Frankenstein. Is that, is that what you kind of, yep. how, how you wanted to interpret your Hulk? Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, a little bit of Frankenstein. The Grey Hulk was a little bit of Frankenstein mixed with um, thinking of his skin as being more like an elephant skin. Um, because, you know, the Hulk that we all know is kind of smooth and, and, and pretty handsome, if you will, right? Uh, so the, the, I wanted to say, well, if we're gonna, I, I just didn't want him to look exactly the same except for he was colored gray, right? When I was drawing him, I was intentionally trying to draw him differently so that it didn't feel like, like it, I said, and, I, and plenty of people did, that they would just draw basically the green Hulk. They would just color him gray. And I didn't want to do that. So, um, so that was it. And so I gave him the big brow, right? He had the big sort of Frankenstein brow, if you will. Um, and, yeah, and he, then, he had that Neanderthal-looking brow on there. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I sort of intentionally made him a little more uh, hunchback, right? So, uh, again, it, uh, I got in on a, on a good time because he was, he was uh, you know, it was a time where I didn't have to copy what was being done by other people. So, um, all right. Now, if we go to teeth, and again, there's a couple ways you can do teeth, right? So, so... You can you can start making teeth. Let me let me do a layer here. You can start doing teeth like sort of uptight along the eyes, right? And and those kind of look cool. So now you get up here, you get a little bit more of a lizard sort of because that's the top half, right? Um, the other one is you can say no, I'm going to make them look really alien. I'm going to go way down. And I'm not going to get to the teeth till I get like way down here. Now, so let's just say, let's just do that because it's just going to be a little bit different. So if I'm doing, you know, something like uh, that, so let me collapse it. Okay. So if I'm doing something like this, where I'm going to have the teeth up in here, then again, I don't even really worry about whether, as a matter of fact, I intentionally make sure that they're not really nice. Because again, I assume that this guy, monster, has been living out in the middle of someplace and his teeth are just all fucked up. So, that, like, you can't get it wrong. What you, and, and the only thing you need to do, I think, is just vary the size of your teeth. So, like, the inside of a dog's mouth or whatever, you don't want them all, all to be the same. Because if you, if you give them something that's a little bit, uh, varied then you're going to have more of a what i would call a crocodile mouth and if you have a crocodile mouth then i just i just think there's sort of a nice variety to it and then and then you have to make decisions of like well is he going to have uh gums and if he's not going to have gums that the that the teeth are just going to basically go right into his skull if you will or his hide then then sometimes you you know you just want to give a little bit of gum lines just to 
just to sort of fill out a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. Just you can you can just give you know they're just sort of weird lines, and then and then you can sort of cut some sideways stuff to define some of it just a little bit. Todd, <laughs> I have a, a question real quick. Do what it. you're doing right now, it looks like you're creating a new character. Um, my what? This looks like you're uh, you're going through the process of creating a new character. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just drawing. I'm just drawing yeah. something. So I was I was going to ask: Is this how exactly how you would create a new character, or do you usually have a um, outline uh, of what you want your character to be before you create it? It depends. It depends. It depends. Sometimes it's like uh, you got a alien spaceship somebody comes out of the spaceship uh and you need you need a monster go i don't i don't i don't care if it's eight feet tall two feet tall what i don't care what it looks like um other times you're going hey this needs to be a female you know somewhat in the vein of Catwoman, lots of leather on her blah 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 so uh depends on what your description is or what you need uh that you're doing here you know if it's just if i'm just coming up with a monster then I'm then my in, my take is to come up with something that's kind of cool. So, so, so now let's let's talk about let's talk about something else when you're doing a monster here. Now what you have to do, and here's here's the thing that I I notice that people don't do, and I think it's I think it's valuable, is you have to assume that this animal is real. So even though it's not in existence you have to pretend well what if it was what what do i want it to do so the reason i say that is okay so he's got he's got his eye socket so here's we've developed the eye socket right so let me let me collapse this so i can get this bigger we developed the eye socket so now the question is do i want where do i want his cheekbone right he has to have a cheekbone so do i want the cheekbone to come up sort of up in here high or do I want the cheekbone to come down low and start to bite into like where his teeth are but even if I do it high up in here and so let's just let's do it up high let's do it up high but I don't know if you guys can see but there's two lines here I've got the line that's the cheekbone so let's just I'll, I'll, so I'll give you some cheekbone here so here's the cheekbone here but there's also, just like in a skull, if you take a skull, if you see the skull of anything, there's also a little bit of a continuation right here, right? This is sort of the age lines that we end up having uh, when, we're, when we're a little bit sort of older. And then if you give yourself the age line, then you go, oh, you know, is there a little bit of wrinkling or aging or overlapping or, you know, petrifying or whatever? happening to that that piece right that piece right here right in here i don't know again there's no wrong there's no wrong other than other than there's there, there there should be a little bit of a game plan again what do you want him to have a nose if you want him to have a nose then is it like uh is it going to be <laughs> excuse me like uh, a lizard's nose which basically means it's going to be almost non-existent so you're just going to give the air hole right up in here same same with ears right do you even want to give them any ears so if you come up in here and you get near the 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 ears then you go okay are we even going to give them any ears and if we give them ears then what do i want the, what do i want the ears to look like and so again there's different ways you can do it you can do them as flapped again if we stick with uh a lizard so let's just say that i don't know if you guys know what a lizard's ear look like but they're almost like holes, right? It's, it's, it, you almost can see into their brain. So it's something like that. It's almost like a knot. It's almost like a knot on, uh, on, on a, a tree or something like that. And the thing is, you know, again, you don't have to get any of this right to start with because you're going to see when I'm done here, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to start cutting in whites or I'm going to erase stuff or whatever else. So... All this stuff is just making, again, there should be some kind of highlights on them. Uh, why? I don't know. Is it because it seems like there should be? And then 
You know, should there should there be again some more warts back up in here? I don't know, but let's do it. What the hell? Uh, and then and then and then this is where you're, you're trying to do it. Like so, this is his this is his ridge right up in here. Then the question is, do I want that to be a heavy ridge? If I want it to be a heavy ridge, then I've got to give a shadow to it. And then not only I've got to give a shadow to it, I've got to I've got to give the illusion that it's curling a bit, right? And this is what all these lines are uh, that at least that I throw is that I'm just trying to create shape so that it feels like if I want it to be rounded, it feels like it's rounded up in here. So now, now that that area up in there feels like it's curving on his head a little bit, right? Cool. Uh, does that, again, is it is it right or wrong? But it, but at least I I'm, I'm if I if I give myself a reason for why I'm doing it, then I know what I'm doing with my line, uh, and that's that's all that that's all that's about. I just want to have I just want to know why I'm throwing the lines uh, that are in there. You know, so, kind of. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, it kind of looks like a combination of a uh, savage dragon and spawn and violet. Yeah, the thing here's the thing about doing monsters. Every time you draw a monster, somebody's going to have a comparison that it looked like something from a movie, magazine, video game, whatever. Right. So nobody, nobody sort of creates in a complete vacuum. So you're just sort of making up stuff that is a combination of stuff that you've seen uh, in in your own brain, and then you just sort of do your own Molotov cocktail of it. Um, is this uh, po uh, possibly a new Spawn villain? Could be. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could 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 make it. So, and again, and then now you. This is where you make choices. Again, <laughs> do you, want, you want some long lines. How 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 much do you want to age them? Because you have to have some long lines, and then you have to have a bunch of short ones. And the more you sort of do a little bit of cross hatching here, just sort of gives a little bit of shadow to light that cheek, so it starts to give a little bit of shape to the to it. And then, and then you know, again, how how wrinkled how wrinkled are his eyes? Right? Does he have a lot of crow's feet? And again, I'm just making it all up. It, does he have a lot of crow's feet, or does he have a little bit? And you get to decide which what it is that you want to do. And then, and then, as you can see, even now. Uh, as I pull it back, uh, it starts to resemble something, right? At that size, right? You know, you're getting someplace if when you go small, you go, yeah, it kind of feels okay. The other thing that uh, going small does is it shows you where you, you might need to add some black, right? So if I want a little bit more shadow here and I want to keep this brow sort of going up over here, then I'm going to need to add a little bit more black up in here, up in the eye, as I get up here. Yeah. All right. So when, you, when you're drawing, like, or designing it out of the blue like this, do you keep in mind, like, logical anatomy so that you, if you want to give him a jaw hinge, for instance, like, are you trying to get that in a place where you could always make him open and close his mouth? Or do you sometimes run into the fact of like, well, this guy is going to have his mouth closed all the time. No, uh, no, I actually, I actually try to imagine if I pulled the skin off, what would his skull look like? Right. So, you know, when you see like a cattle head or something like that, right. Or a coyote's head or something, skull or something, right. You, yeah. you just go, oh, it's elongated or even an alligator skull, right. It's all elongated. Uh, and so you go, oh, it's kind of cool to look at. So, so the, the concepts are still the same, right? So now yeah, if so I come you up... You do keep those in mind. Like when drawing this, you kind of have an idea of where the jaw hinge is going to go for this yep. guy? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, because at some point, I'm going to have to get to the jaw, right? And so now the, the question is, I'm going to go to the jaw, the jaw. There's Okay, so let's look at it. There's a, couple, there's a couple different ways to do this. This is where you get to have fun. So let's go and add some layers. There's, I can do this a couple different ways. Right, I could make it. Maybe I'll even let you guys decide. I could make it. I'll, I'll give myself two options. I could make it that he's got his mouth sort of closed. I'd have to get rid of some of the shadows there, and then 
what ends up happening is he's got what I call an overbite, right? So he comes up in here, blah, 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 blah. and then and then you start making up these other decisions. Okay, if he's got the overbite, he's got his teeth down here. Then does he have a small jaw, right? Because they're the, that's a face, right? So there's a face. Um, the other option is that you could say, no, 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 Todd, I don't want it. I don't want it to be uh, a small jaw. I want to actually go the opposite. I want. I want to make it. I want to make it as big, fucking cool, badass, big, sort of cool thing. He's got here. He's got lots of little tiny hairs on it. Uh, and then he's got the, the little sort of jaw. So, but those are two, I would argue, those are two different kinds of animals, right? Because now, now we're looking at somebody who has a lot, like a big jaw and a lot of weight. And probably if you go here, then you're going to also want to start giving him a big thick neck because he's got a big thick jaw. So you're going to want to give him a big thick neck, right? Uh, let me go here. So this is sort of some of the shadows underneath, underneath the neck area, right? So whatever. Um, and you can see very quickly, you can see very quickly that there's a difference between that face and that face, right? This one seems a little more like lizardy, a little more snake-like, a little more alien-like. Uh, at that point, if I was doing this this small one here, then this becomes sort of part of, you know, the, his sort of rest of his face. He has a little bit, almost a little, uh, like a dragon or something like that, right? I'd probably give him a little bit longer neck, so the neck would probably go sort of something like here, up in here. And now you're getting you're getting that you're getting that look. And again, I don't know how big that is on everybody's screen there, but um, you're getting that look as compared to that look, right? So, uh, what's it? What did I do? I must have drawn on something. I must have whited out something. Oh, no, here it is here. Oh, I see what I did. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you guys... Got a preference one way or the other? You like the big jaw or the skinny jaw? Big jaw all day. Big jaw. Big jaw. Big jaw. Okay, so we'll go with the big jaw then. So I'll dump this one. Yep, big jaw. Okay. I'm so a skinny jaw, man. I like the yep. little one. So, oh. yeah. yeah, man. It's, it gives it more of like a violator sort of feel. Yeah, yeah you know, I remember that video you made a few years ago, Todd. Of the you know the venom moving up. well it was it wasn't a few years ago I think it was but yeah whatever anyways I remember when you added more teeth and you made his jaw like more yeah. narrow you right know, so made his mouth so, like opened up more yeah so here's here's another option I'll show you another option again this is where you just start getting weird right I could make it that this was his mouth and that it's open right and that and that the the teeth are now going to be way down here. And now you've got a screaming, you've got a screaming guy at that point, right? And then you decide whether you're going to have a big jaw or a small jaw, right? So, uh, and then once you do that, then again, you still have to decide, okay, you've got the jaw, it comes up in here. You still have to give, there has to be a hinge to somebody's question. There has to be a hinge up in here because it's got to move, but um anyways that's uh yeah i kind of like the the open mouth variant there that one was actually really cool yeah the skinny jaw with the open mouth was pretty awesome what yeah because it, it still gives it, it yeah yeah it gives it like a it's big sure. uh wow. like size but not um like too meaty it's still it's like a little more scary I'm really starting to like the no jaw, like just teeth from his chin. <laughs> oh, no, I've, 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 dude, look at, 
This is where you can come up with crazy. I have done stuff like that, right? That's so, my uncle. Looks yeah. like his jaw got knocked off by spawn or something. No, nope. yeah. Honestly, so now, when, when you now, started drawing it, that's what happening. That was. You come in, you come in, and you do sort of. You can come in like this, a little bit, a little bit of chicken mm -hmm. up, up in here, right? And now you get a little bit of turtle, right? <laughs> so this, this is where, this is where I'm saying, this is the cool thing about monsters is you can never be wrong with any of it. No matter what choice you yeah. make, it's always the right choice of whatever it is that you want. So, um, again, I would argue. Oh, that's mine. I go. Who's got a beeper? That's my house. Um, you make a leak. A leak. So, so if you do that, then he. To me, it seems. It seems like it's a little bit skinny, right? And it doesn't seem nearly as powerful. Oh, so my water, my water heater. Uh oh, I must have. I must have a leak. I must have a leak. I have to check that out after I'm done. Um. So I would say that this guy doesn't seem nearly as ferocious as that guy, right? That's the guy you're going to send in to go kick somebody's ass because he just looks like he's a heavyweight. This guy seems more like a welterweight right here. So, and that's what I'm saying, that you can, you, can, you can just drive yourself crazy coming up with all this stuff. But, uh, but let's, just, let's just stick with this one for now. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just stick with this one. All right. And the reason is because then I can come in there and say, okay, so now this is... Um, if this is now the jaw, then the question is, where, how far do you want to pronounce the, the chin? So there's got to be a chin in here someplace, right? So do you want to make the chin sort of, sort of early on in it, in 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 the sort of drawing of it? Uh oh, gotta get up on top. Um, because if you come in, if you come in early, then you're going to give all the weight sort of up in this area here, and and I'm just going to build it up. And then the question is, is that it's like, oh, okay, then I'm going to have some of the weight come in here, and then I'm going to want some of this. To sort of come in here, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I, I, got, I guess I got rid of some of the teeth, but so let's just add some cool teeth for now. So, and again, I, these these extra lines here are just like again how how sort of veiny do you want to make some of this stuff, right? How how sort of grungy do you want to make any of this up in here? How how tall do you want to make some of the the teeth that you're doing? I wonder if it would look good with like some tu a tusk or some tusks. Uh, okay, then for sure we get the then for sure we get the violator. And I get his cousin. I get his kissing cousin. Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late. This is Evo. Uh, I was just wondering if this is going to be like a new character, or you guys are using an existing one. No, just making it up on as we're talking. Question: um, Do you have any tips as far as like uh, I see you doing like large, medium, like super small scale details? Um, do you have any tips to like uh, like how you decide what uh, no. when to stop detailing or or when to no um, no? This is why I've always said to people, I can't, I can't teach anybody my inking style because a lot of what I'm doing when I'm inking, I, I literally just do it at the moment, right? So if you were to give me, even if you were to give me full pencils, right? And you gave it to me on Monday and said, Todd, ink this page. Uh, and you were able to make me forget what I did. Even if I didn't forget and you gave it to me like a week later and said, ink it again, I wouldn't ink it the same way. I mean, from a distance, it would kind of look the same. It would look a lot the same. But then you'd go in there and you go, man, why did Todd, why did Todd on Monday do lines up and down? But a, a, a week later, he decided to make lines uh, left and right instead of up and down, right? And the answer is, I don't know, just, it was just the moment. 
I just was drawing and I just felt like that, that, that would look cool that at that point. And, uh, and, and th- so I know there, there are guys that are really technical and they could teach their skill to other people. I, it's one of the reasons why I don't think there's anybody that really sort of inks like me. I know there's people who've tried. I think that they add too many lines to the point that it starts looking dirty because they don't really understand why I'm doing most of the lines. I'm actually throwing these lines here on this corner up in here. So like in here, so that, uh, I, I can create the jaw sort of being rounded. It's not just throwing lines for the sake of lines. I'm actually, I'm actually thinking of something while I'm doing it. Right. So there's a reason why I'm turning it because I want these lines here to go down because they'll give you a sense that this piece of flap or whatever it is, is going down. And then these ones are going to go sideways here, right? And up over here, these ones are going to all now be sideways. Uh, and, and those I'm doing those purposely because I, I want it, I want it to curve and I want it to turn in certain ways. So it feels like there's structure there, good, bad, or indifferent. So do you ever find yourself like getting stuck in like a, a detailed black hole where you just kind of like overdo it or, or yeah, you, oh, yeah. you kind of pull back? No, fuck yeah. What are you talking about? I've overkilled plenty of drawings in my day. Yeah, I'm sure you have. I'm, 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 I may even be, I may be overkilling this one. So, but because you also want to have some open spots so that you have the illusion of light hitting faces and stuff, right? So, um, you don't have to, you don't have to be doing lines everywhere. You, what you want to do is sort of pick your moments so that you just have the illusion like here, these little things I'm putting by the teeth just to create a little bit of, you know, maybe shape to the teeth, right? So I get to that, but anyways, so we'll, we'll sort of cut it off here. So I don't get too crazy with it. Hey, Todd, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions if I can. Yeah. So let me just say the last thing that I would end up doing with all of this is coming in here. If I want to give him some hair, do, 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 do. Um, last thing I would do is then usually come in and cut the whites. So if I did give him hair, right? Then you just give a couple of little cuts so it feels like the hairs are actually sticking out a little bit. If I think that some of the teeth didn't get sharp enough, I can go in there and point them up a little bit, you know? So clean them up if I wanted to, just a bit. Like that too, so I want to make it sharper. I can come up in here. Hey, Todd, can I ask you a couple of questions? Do it. So this is Andu. Uh, I just want to thank you because a bunch of times I po- posted my art in the artist corner and you gave me positive feedback. So thank you for that. It means a lot. Also, I had a little story and I've been wondering for like four years uh, about this question. Basically, at the New York Comic Con in 2019, um, I got there and there randomly. The guy gave me a ticket on the street and I came straight to see if I could find you and talk to you. So I got there, and there's like a big line. People are there to sign, get your autograph. And there's no way for me to get in line because everybody had reservations. So I really wanted to talk to you. So what I did was, I remember I had a picture of this guy I saw on the street. It was like a fat, bald guy that looked like the violator. So while you were signing autographs, I literally just called your name. And I was like, hey, Todd, you want to see a picture of the violator? And for some reason, that sparked your interest and once you were done signing all the autographs you actually had an interview to do but you came to talk to me you actually told the interview no i want to talk to this guy i don't know if you remember that so we talked about 10 minutes i showed you my art you were giving me very much a lot of positive feedback and uh you, you told me take a picture so you have a picture of us meeting in this moment and when i wanted to do that my phone died so you told the, the guy that was going to interview, you told him to take a picture of us and then give me his email so he could email it to me. The guy, I emailed him, he never sent me the picture. So the, first, so the first question is, 
if can I have a picture with you at this Comic Con? Because I would really love to have a picture with you. And secondly, the next day I, I when I went home is because I make a lot of uh, art on subway maps on New York subway maps. I never drew spawn before, but I felt like compelled to do it. And I made like this big spawn on a subway map, cutting the violator's head. I came back to Comic Con. I looked for you there. I couldn't find you. I showed the piece to your workers there. They're all like said it was really cool that I should show it to you. And then I came and talked to you, but you were in a rush. And I gave you the subway map, but I never told you there was art in there. So my question is, did you ever see the art, or did you just think I gave you a random subway map? That was I, th I, th I thought you thought I was lost. So I go, wow, this is a nice guy. I think I'm lost. Give me a subway. So I did <laughs> not I did, I did. not see it. No. Nope. Oh, so. that's crazy. That's darn, darn it. So that's, that's funny. That's funny. So, I, I, yeah, because I, I was a little bit like, I don't know. Um, I got a little bit shy to, to showing you like my first pawn ever drawing. And I thought, I don't know. So I, I think that's funny. I think you just thought I gave you a random subway map. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, no, you're just being friendly. I go, look, you're being friendly. I want to make sure I don't get lost in this, in this, in this, in this, big, in this big city. So, all right. So, um, okay, cool. So but hopefully see. I can get a picture with you uh, this time. All right. If, cool. if, if uh, again, like I said, I don't know what my schedule is going to be like, but so okay. Well, hopefully we'll be able to do it. If not, um, uh, I, I at least I know you didn't see the drawing. That's funny. Anyway, uh, thank you. Yep. Hey Todd, do I get the name of the monster? I don't have the name. I have to come up with it. What, what's your What's your name? Ashborn the Dragon King. <laughs> uh, so Ashborn. So I see your name all the time. So Bashborn. That's what we're gonna call him. Bashborn. Because he looks like he looks like he's bat. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we'll call him. It would be cool to throw this uh, become a uh, odd key NFT. That's a cool little badge we can all collect. <laughs> it's gonna be one of one. That's the plan. <laughs> Bash born right there. So is this is this true, Todd? So in order to be like a professional artist, you have to have natural talent. I know it takes a lot of practice, but did you have like a natural talent for you know drawing and stuff? I was the proverbial best artist in the class, but I I have to tell you, I like. Uh, it just comes from doing it over and over and over because you start figuring out like why you're doing what you're doing. Right. And, and I'm applying it to, you know, comic book sort of uh, rules. So uh, I didn't know what those rules were. So you have to learn, you have to learn on the fly. So I, I mean, do you have to have some talent? Obviously you do. Um, but, but I, I, I've always said, I, and my wife doesn't believe it, but I've always said I could teach somebody to become a, uh, a proficient artist. I mean, not, not great, but I think I could create somebody just, just like if you, somebody gave me two years, I could teach, teach them Spanish, right? I think I can teach them. I think I can teach them to draw because they're just, you just start giving them the rules like here, you know, start thinking about, it as being a creature and then this is going to be a horn so now we're going to make it a, a sheep horn or something like that okay so you just as long as as long as you're you you come up with your repertoire of 10 20 things that you're you can do you can almost apply that to anything right so yeah anyway yeah. anyways there it is i would argue that if you go too small it gets too gray it gets a little bit too gray but um and it gets a little bit hard to look at, but which is why sometimes you have to come in there and sort of cut some whites on it. But anyways, yeah, that's that it. Was great. There's, this is drawing 101 for today. Boom, right, boom. Hey, Todd. Thank, thank awesome uh, drawing. Hey, question. How did Ozzy Osbourne, how did you come up with patient number nine with Ozzy Osbourne and Todd McFarley? How did y'all's paths cross? Like, how did that all happen? Uh, years ago, I made a toy of Ozzy, um, and so that was a while back. Um, 
And so I met Ozzy and Sharon and, you know, the whole family, right? This was like long before the, the reality show. Uh, and we just sort of enjoyed each other's company. Uh, can't say that we were good friends, we, you know, but we enjoyed each other's company when we were together. Uh, and a bunch of time goes by and he's got his new album coming out and they needed a music video. And I don't know, I, 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 I have to assume it was Sharon that basically reached out and said, hey, you know what, years ago we did this thing with Todd and Todd's also did, you know, music videos and won a couple Grammys on some animation. We want to do some animation, you know, see if she's, see if she's available. So it just, it just oddly came a lot of years since the last time I had run into either one of them. And then, and then, you know, we just sort of felt like we had sort of skipped all that time and we're back to just sort of being cordial friends again. Like, Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, good. What's up? No, blah, blah. And then we do. And then we ended up making the, the, the music video. So, uh, that, I just, somebody just actually sent me something today that it's number one on the billboard. I don't know if it's here in America or in Europe or something like that. Hit number one. So. Would, would, you, would, you, um, would you change anything about okay. Spawn's design in Mortal Kombat 11 or do you think it's perfect? Um, I don't know enough about Mortal Kombat to know uh, what, what I wanted with that was to create a character that would fit within Mortal Kombat. So uh, I think that the, whether they got it right or wrong, I think you should be asking people who actually play the game. And, and I think they have a, a better understanding of whether he fits or looks the part or whatever else. I mean, he, cause he sort of looks, I mean, he looks like Spawn. Um, but does it does it make sense within the confines of that game? I don't know. I, I, exactly. I, 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 I always, like, I looked at his cape and I was like, I wish it was longer, you know, but, you yeah. know, they, you know, but it, it, it probably, it's probably harder to animate or something, you know, so, you know. Yeah, it's, I, sometimes you can make it so that for a moment it shuts out and then it comes back in, right? You know, sort of like a tongue, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. But... Um, but I, but I told them to make him the best Mortal Kombat player, uh, in the game. And don't worry about whether everything makes sense to spawn the comic book character. So I go, you can take whatever artistic license you want, but you'll have done your job. If somebody who likes Mortal Kombat says, man, I don't even know who this guy is. Prawn or Spam or whatever his name is. Um, but. But man, I, he's the he's 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 the most fun to play, uh, yeah, and so yeah. that's that's what I wanted them to do. And yeah. I, and I, I hope we you know someday we get a spawn free roam game, kind of like Ar- Batman Arkham type of free roam. You know, yeah, yeah, that needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 Todd, I have a question I'm... pertaining to the movie, if you don't mind. What's yeah, your, what's your what's your vision going forward for the movie and? Or are you planning on expanding on it? Okay, I'm going to show you guys what happens. If you want to go really alien, you get rid of the nose. And you just come in. And you don't worry about whether you've got a nose. And it changes the, the dynamics a little bit. That's, that's pure alien compared to that, right? So... Looks a little more dragon esque, I guess, or something. So, you guys want to draw aliens, just give them big eyes and no nose, and you'll have an alien every single time. So, Ashborn looks like he could be a character in the Scorched comic book. Yeah. So, hold on, I got I got to flatten this because I was going to move the jaw here for somebody. That's right. Uh, you guys like the nose or no? Yes or no? Mm, I'm not sure to be honest. I it like the way. I think it looks much better without the nose. Probably without, yeah, you're right. Without it, without the nose. Yeah, I'm going yeah. without the nose. All right, you guys win. You guys win. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get rid I of this. I really, really, uh, I really, Mr. Todd. 
is less on than this. Okay, so now I'm gonna flatten this page. So, so because now we can play with that even more. But yeah, your writing has really improved in the in the Gunslinger series. Great, great, yeah. great job. <laughs> got, I've got to, I've got to, actually, I got to remind you, I've got to write some tonight because we go to press on Tuesday with it. So I got to get it to the letter this weekend. So, okay, so now this entire thing is flattened. I don't have any layers, so we're done. This is it. We can't change him. He's there. But theoretically, you can change him. Oh, man, you know what I don't have? Uh, I, was, I lost my lasso tool, and I was going to try and find out how I get it. But So there's a, poor, there's a poor man's version of how I can do it. Uh, let's just go here. You know, uh, how would he look with a long tongue? It looked too much like venom, you think? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of I'm not a big fan of uh, long tongues. I I don't I don't think they're menacing. I don't think they're imposing. I don't think they're scary. I think they look like my dog when when he's panting and he's had <laughs> overheating. I, I've never had anybody stick out their tongue to me and wiggle it, and I was like afraid on any level. So maybe if you were a cobra or something, I, if, it, if it came out. And it snapped like a cobra or like a, a frog tongue, and it went, kush, kush, and it snapped back in, maybe. But, you know, when it just sort of drifts in air, like it's sort of swimming underwater, it, it's not imposing to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like, a fan of that venom design at all. Like, at all. about a okay. big nasty wart on the side of the face? <laughs> so I've got, I've got, so what I did is I cut the, the jaw here, right? So, um, let me, let me get rid of some of this. I need to make my eraser bigger. So, I, I, there you go. all right. So, I mean, if I, if I had a lasso tool, then I could have just cut exactly what it was that I wanted. But let's just take for now. Get rid of this. All right. <clears throat> All right. And then what ends up happening is that I can then go to my tools and then I can hit move it. And if I move it, then I can, I can put it in, right? So not only can I put it in, if I want, I can also tilt it, right? So if I want to make it, like, open or whatever, blah. What? <laughs> That's cool. So, uh, and, then, and then I can then bring it back down, right? So I can bring it down in here again. So, I, so again... And then if I did something like that, then, um, then you come in with the white and you just, whoops. It looks like you could easily just have like two rows of teeth, kind of like alien uh, with the copy paste there too easily, you know. Like a mouth within a mouth, kind of like, you know, a couple rows of teeth. Yeah, no, no, no. There's a, there's a great thing about about Photoshop. I know this probably doesn't probably wouldn't look good, but like it would be interesting, like fire coming out of his neck or something. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and I was thinking that Tusk sort of play. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think I think he's mentioned about the Tusk, which is why I sort of started cool. turning that, that piece up there. Yeah, maybe um, like the Tusk out of his cheek. And then if you open it up, then again, what do you, you know, is, does he have, does he have some kind of, some kind of tongue? Yeah. 
but again, you know, you got it closed and then. Yeah, that one looks better. Oh, yeah. So, so here, then you can go blah, 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 blah. So. <laughs> <laughs> And I can make it. I can make a gif. I can make a gif of it. Come to Oddkey. Come to Oddkey. See Odd, Oddkey. So. <laughs> Steve. I okay. Yep. So. Steve Actually, in New York. We should make it. and We should send it to Steve. A okay. A okay. <laughs> so. The one on one right there. Yep. All right. Uh, save it. Anyway, so that's today's drawn lesson uh, for everybody. Just, just make it up. Just make it up. It just sort of comes. Like I said, there's nothing wrong. I mean, t tomorrow we could do it again and I'd throw a bunch of lines and it would also be right because it's just monsters. It's always cool, it's always perfect. So. Awesome. All right. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. We'll see some of you guys at New York and, uh, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know if we'll have time to chat before then, but if not, maybe what we should do is not necessarily have a chat before that is go do a New York Comic Con and then, and then do a, a chat afterwards to talk to people who obviously the majority of people who couldn't make it. And and do a rundown of what 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 happened at New York Comic Con. All right, great, great, Todd, you rock, man. Take care. All right, everybody, be good. Thanks for your time.